QuickBooks Online 2023. Invoice created from check, created from purchase order. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have the free QuickBooks Online sample company open. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it the incognito window or another browser you can open the incognito window if using google chrome by selecting three dots on the browser incognito window and then in the search engine typing quickbooks online test drive we're going to be using the sample company to be comparing and contrasting the accounting view the view that get great guitars is in and the business view the view that the sample company is in if you want to switch between the two views it's something you can do by going to the cog drop down up top and the switch views down below Opening up a couple tabs to put reports in we're going to right click on the tab up top like we do every time to duplicate it right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again and then go to the tab to the middle as the one to the right's thinking reports on the left tab and then we want the balance sheet report which is one of the faves one of the favorites if you're in the business view by the way the reports are in the business overview reports on the left hand side we're then going to go to the tab to the right open up the reports again this time the p to the l the profit to the loss the income statement close up the hamburger otherwise known as the boogie and then we're going to change the range from 01 01 2 3 12 31 no one else calls it the boogie but i'd call it the boogie and we're going to run it just so you just so you know if you call it the boogie someone might not know what you're talking about but i'm going to go to the tab in the middle we're going to close the boogie and then we're going to scroll up and do the range changes going from 01 01 2 3 tab 12 31 2 3 tab run it to refresh it that's what we do every time with the setup process okay now we're going to create another invoice but this time we're going to do the whole connection process between uh the, an invoice that we created a purchase order and then a check for so to understand that let's go back to our flowchart over here and recap what we did in a prior presentation now note that if you have inventory we've got the caveats on the inventory there's multiple ways you can track inventory you don't have to track it within the quickbooks system you might try to stay on a cash-based system if you have just in time inventory and just expense the inventory as you purchase it because you're going to turn around and sell it uh, uh, quickly or you might do a periodic system tracking the inventory in an excel worksheet tracking the units and then recording just the dollar amounts for the financial reporting purposes uh, in QuickBooks doing periodic adjustments to adjust to the physical count in your Excel worksheet for example that you might do on a nightly weekly or monthly basis but here we're using a perpetual inventory system using the full services within QuickBooks to track not only the dollar amounts but the unit amount of inventory inventory will span the vendor cycle where money is going to go out for purchases typically and the customer cycle where we expect money to be coming in for sales on the purchases side of things clearly we're buying the inventory and that might start with a purchase order we would only use the purchase order if we're in a type of situation where we can request the inventory without actually paying for it at that point in time so you'd have to have a, a special relationship in that case if you're buying the inventory or paying for it at the point in time that you request it then you would go straight to a, a check form or a bill we entered a purchase order in the past and then we would expect let's imagine we bought our guitars from like china or something like that or we're buying them from epiphone and then we expect them to come to us with a box of guitars the inventory that we're purchasing being guitars and a bill in it the bill might say invoice on it 
because the invoice is what they would create if they were using QuickBooks because we would be their customer from that side of the table. But to us, it would be a physical bill, which we could enter into the system with a bill form, but aren't required to, because we could also just enter it in with a check or expense form, which is what we did in the past. So in other words, once we get the inventory with the bill, physical bill in it, we then have to pay the bill in some way. Either we enter it as a bill, which we'll do in the following month. We'll talk about entering that transaction more of an accrual thing in the following month, or we can just basically pay the bill right away using a check form or an expense form, which is what we did last time. Uh, so that's what we did. Then of course, we're gonna turn around and sell the inventory at some point in the future. Now we might buy the inventory with no intention to sell it to a particular client. But if we do have a particular client, then we might track the client in this whole stream of transactions. So in other words, if a client came in, they said, I want this particular guitar. And we said, okay, we'll buy you that guitar. We don't have it on hand. I'll ask my vendor to buy it for you. We then make a purchase order requesting it on the purchase order. We're gonna put who we're buying it for. Not because the vendor needs it, Epiphone doesn't need it, but so we can track it so that when we get the guitar, it'll remind us to then turn around and make an invoice. Then when we when we receive the inventory with a bill on it from Epiphone, we can enter the bill with a bill form or we did last time with a check or expense form. The check form will have the billable item allowing us to check off that it's gonna be billable if we so choose, although we have to be careful of that as we will see so that we can then know that we need to turn around and then create the sales side of things, which would be the invoice for the client that we or customer that we purchased the guitar for. So that's going to be the process. So I'm going to go back on over. I'm going to go to the first tab now. And then let's go into our expenses side of things to kind of recap what we saw in a prior presentation. We can go into the vendors, for example, and I'm going to close up the hamburger and we, we had purchase orders for our major vendor that we buy from. That's going to be Epiphone. That's who we buy the guitars from. And then we made these two purchase orders here. So if I go uh, into this purchase order, for example, we go into that purchase order. Uh, it's linked to a check form. So that would indicate that we got a receivement received on it. And we've got these two customers or the customer in these two fields, that customer being Eric Music. So the purchase order is requesting from the vendor, but we put the customer in there. So when I turn around and pay it, it'll remind me to create the invoice. This is the first step, the purchase order. If I close that back out, if I look at this purchase order, then we can see this one didn't have any actual customer field because we just purchased them for the shop. Closing that back out. And then we made a check form, I believe encompassing or, or being populated from both of those purchase orders. So if I go into that, this is us. Now we imagined we got the guitars and with the bill in it, and we populated the information that we're just gonna pay the bill that we got with a check. But we have these two customers that populated from the purchase order. Then we have this billable option. We then made them a uh, billable here. This is where we gotta be very careful because these billable items are neat because they allow us to then create an invoice for this particular customer, but it's not exactly using the items tab the way we might imagine it to do it's kind of using this billable tab. So it would be like pulling over like a telephone expense that we paid, tried, trying to pull that over into the invoice. Let's just take a quick look at where the options are to turn that on in the settings. I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right, right click on it. And let's go up to the, uh, the cog up top. And I'm gonna go into the accounting and settings. And then we're in the expenses tab on the left hand side. And then in this billing area, it says right here, make expenses and items billable. So mark with, with a default rate or so mark, you could add, you could mark it up, but usually that's not what we would like to have it be doing is driven by the items, not just, just to mark it up. Uh, but then we've got the uh, track billable expense items as income. So it would create another kind of income line item if we use that kind of billable item but it's not really using the items to drive where it's going. So let me show you what I mean on that. Let's complete this out. And so let's go to, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. 
So now we're gonna turn around and create an invoice for uh, Eric Music, and then it'll ask us to populate with this billable item because that's what the that's what the purpose of it, the billable item is. Let's close that out, and I'm gonna go to the plus button up top, and let's make an invoice. And so I'm just gonna type in Eric Music, Eric, Eric Music, and tab, and then so now we have these items pulling over for for uh, the billable items. So let's. Let's pull them both in. Let's add all of them, add all. And so then I'm gonna close this out. And so let's go through tapping through it. I'm not gonna add an email address. We've got the send, the terms, the, let's go to the date. Let's make the date the 23rd, plus button, plus button, 123, number, location. And then everything else is populating like we've seen in a prior invoice, it's just populating now, pulling over from that billable item. Now, the tricky thing is that you can see it's kind of linked over here. That link indicates that it pulled in from a billable item. It looks like it's pulling in the item perfectly, but if I go down here, notice if I type in an ELP again, then you can see the ELP is actually $500, not the $400. Now, if you've worked with the desktop version, the desktop version actually somehow does it the way you would hope, right? It, it actually changes the rate to the sales price using using the sales item typically, I believe, where it's not doing it here. So you could use this kind of billable item, but then you might want to then, then you'd have to check down here and say, okay, the ELP should be $500 and then I would change it to $500 and I believe everything else will still populate properly uh, if you do that. But it's a, it's kind of annoying that it puts in the four. And then here, I'm gonna do the same thing with the the e, uh, P -S -E -P -S -H it is. So an EPSH uh, is $400. So this one, I'm gonna change the rate to 400. So, and then I'm just going to delete this bottom item. So you can see what I did there. I, I pulled them in, but then I'm going to double check that they're actually doing the right rate because that billable item pulls in the cost, which is typically how that billable function works because you usually use it when you pay for like gas or, or materials or something like that so that the materials will then populate over into the invoice as just the amount that you paid for it. Plus you might add a markup if you were doing like a construction process project, for example, everything you paid for, you can then say, when I paid for it, I'm going to pull it into the invoice and at cost, but we don't want to pull it into the invoice at cost here. We want it to use the items to make it the sales price. So it gets a little wonky on that. You got to be really careful with that tool. So there is that. So everything else is an invoice. So I'm gonna go down here and change this to the 5% for our generic problem, which you could do here, or you can change the math if you wanna follow along with our generic problem for the sales tax. And so there it is. So what's this gonna do? It's an invoice now. So it's gonna increase the accounts receivable for the full amount, 30,450. The other side's gonna to go to the sales driven, you would think, you know, by the items, but it would be the 29,000 uh, that we charged. And then sales tax payable is going up a liability 1450 and then the inventory is going to go down by the amounts driven by the items hopefully and then the other side is going to go to cost of goods sold the net impact on net income is the sales price minus the cost of goods sold we also have the sub ledger for accounts receivable will be impacted tracking the fact that eric music is the one that owes us the money and we're going to try to collect on that and then the inventory sub ledger is also going to go down by units hopefully as well driven by these items let's check it out and double check that that is indeed the case let's save it and close it save it and close it and then we're going to go to the tab to the right we're going to run it to refresh it because we only work with fresh stuff here no no old moldy reports and then in the accounts receivable going into the a to the r going into the a to the r we've got the invoice here that looks good Thirty thousand four fifty. Thirty thousand four fifty. that's the total down below so that's the total okay go back up top x out of that scroll up back to our report then i'm going to go to the profit and loss run it to refresh it and then drilling into the cost of goods sold 
I'm sorry, let's go to the sales side first. I'm kind of curious to go to the cost of goods sold. I want to get there first, but no sales. Sales first. So there's our invoice with the two line items, the 25,000, the 4,000, doesn't include the sales tax, just as we would expect, closing that back out, scrolling up back to the report, back to the middle, back to the report, and then back to the middle tab, and then we want the liabilities. There it is in our sales tax payable for that department, because we're gonna pay California department and so on. There's the, there's the uh, sales tax which looks correct. Okay, that's a lot of sales tax. Woo! And scrolling up and we're going to go back. And then we also have the inventory. If I go into the inventory, it's gone down. Inventory is the asset. It's going down with an invoice because we sold the inventory. So there's the amount for the invoice, uh, 1006. So you've got these dollar amounts, separate line items because of the, but it's being driven hopefully by the units of inventory that's being that are being decreased hereby. So if I go into that, those amounts aren't on the actual form, but it's using the the items hopefully to be decreasing the inventory because we use that billable thing uh, to do it. Notice there's this invoice is 1006 with two lines and I have I have uh, four lines here. Now, that, I believe that's because QuickBooks is using a, a flow assumption of first in, first out. So that means when they when they re remove the inventory, they have to do it in alignment with what the layers of the flow assumption. Even though we haven't changed the price of anything, I think they're tying it out kind of like to when we purchased it. So that why so that can be a little confusing uh, at first. But I believe that's the rationale for it. Going back and then tab to the right and the profit or the cost of goods sold here. So there's the cost of goods sold for this side. The net impact on the AR, on the income statement is the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. And it did put the revenue into the sale of product revenue, right? Which is what we would expect driven by the item. That's what the item would typically tell it to go to. So that looks good. It didn't put it into like a random revenue account uh, for for the billable item. It's just that dollar amount thing that's a little weird. So if I go back to the first tab and the AR, the sub, we should have a sub ledger breaking out by, cus by customer. So if I go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate it. So we can see that sub ledger and we're gonna go to the reports and let's close up the bogey and scroll down who owes you. Let's look at the AR aging summary report and check that out as of the end of the year, 12, 30, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, run it to refresh it. And so we've got the agings, but I'm just looking at the three customers that add up to the 38, 670, That should tie out to what's here, 38, 670, We can also track that internally to try to collect on it as we saw with the invoices before in the sales tab, like the customer tab, and then in the customers, which if you were in the business view, by the way, would be in the, the get paid and paid area. And in the get paid, you got your customer tab here. So there we have it. And then you can find, uh, you can find the customer or I can sort up top by the open invoices and then it'll give us a list of customers with the open invoices and i think we we're looking at eric music i believe and then you can also go to the sales tab or the invoices and track your invoices that way as well in the sales tab you can change this to invoices and possibly you want the open ones to try to collect on the payments if you were on the business view by the way that's in a little bit different area in the bookkeeping tab on the left transactions up top and then your all sales uh, transactions to find those invoices. All right, so now that we got the idea of it, let's do it again, ultra base one more time here. So let's check out if I go to the expenses tab on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna close this out and I go down to uh, Gibson. This is another person that we buy guitars from, our inventory. So we can see we got the two purchase orders down here for them. So if I go into the purchase order, this being the beginning request form, this purchase order has this customer related to it. The customer is there not for the benefit of Gibson 
uh, USA, the person we're purchasing from, but for us so that when we get the guitars, we can turn around and sell it. Then we entered instead of a bill, which we'll do in the following month, we entered a check this time when we just to pay off the bill as we got the guitars or when we got the guitars. And then in that check form down here, we put uh, it's a billable item and we could link to it here if we so choose. We added the customer. So now we can turn around and sell it to Music Stuff Store. We have the same caveat to be aware of that it might pull over at cost instead of for the sales price, but it still has that linkage. So let's go close this out. Plus button. Let's make an invoice for uh, Music Music Stuff Store. Great name. Who came up with that name? That's genius. We're gonna say add that, close this thing up. And then we're gonna say, this is gonna be the 24th on the date. Due date is gonna be 30 days from that because we have the net 30. And then down below, once again, it pulled in everything. You got the link, which is nice. But if I type in again down here, GBGSB, it comes out to 777. So it pulled it in at the cost instead of instead of the sales price. So I gotta change it to 777. If I wanna use that method, I gotta close it. I gotta close this back out. I wanna use the one with a link in it though, because then otherwise it'll if I if I don't use that or or delete the link, then it'll try to pull in again when I make another invoice. So you still you can you wanna use that one to if you're gonna use this method and change the rate typically any case so there's the link and so so now we should be good i'm going to change the sales tax to that five percent as has been our custom for the practice problem and there it is what's this going to do invoice accounts receivable goes up full amount the other side goes to revenue driven by the item for the amount we charge the difference sales tax going to a sales tax payable account inventory going down by an amount not on the invoice but the amount that we just saw and changed driven by the item cost of goods sold going up by that same amount net impact on net income revenue minus the cost of goods sold also the sub ledger for receivables is going to be impacted for music stuff store so we can try to collect from music stuff store and the sub ledger for inventory will be impacted for the number and units of inventory for the gibson sg guitars we're selling Let's save it, close it, and see if that is indeed what happens. You could say it, but let's see if that is what really happens. All right, let's go to the balance sheet, run it to refresh it. So we're working on fresh stuff, just like a fresh piece of fruit or something. And then we're going to go into the AR, accounts receivable. There it is. If I go into it, 818550 looks muy B to the N. Two letters to explain that one, B-N. That one looks right for the full amount. And then going back to our report, the other side's on the profit loss, the income statement, run it to refresh it. It should have gone into the sales of product income. So there it is right there. Music stuff store looks good. That one's on the books for not the including the sales tax, but what we charge, the difference of the sales tax at the 38850 uh, should be in a payable account. So let's go back to our report here. Go back to the balance sheet and then go into the payable account, which is a liability. Mine's for California because we had a California Beverly Hills, but we just did a generic 5%. There is that one. That looks correct. Going back, we know that the AR or that's the inventory is also affected. Inventory, that's what you're on. Keep your head in the game, dang it. Inventory. So there it is, inventories impacted down here. Notice there's two line items of inventory, even though we only had one line item on the invoice because I believe of, of the flow assumption first in, first out. So I think that uh, looks good. Those amounts aren't on the actual uh, form because they're driven, but driven by the form. If I go to the sales, cost of goods sold has those same amounts here. The net impact on net income on the income statement, revenue minus the cost of goods sold. Also, if I go to the balance sheet, the accounts receivable should tie out to the sub ledger 46830, which should tie out over here to our sub ledger 
46830, breaking it out by customer. I should also be able to find the open invoices on the tab to the left if I wanted to look in my sales tab and see, for example, by customer, my open invoices. So I can try to collect on the invoices and or send statements saying, hey, you owe us money, uh, people. You owe us money. There's four open invoices. This, it's been a long time. We gave you a guitar. That's okay. And then we also have the inventory. I didn't check the inventory last time. We should have a sub ledger for the inventory. So I'm going to right click on the tab to the right, or let's just, let's just do it on this tab since I don't need this report anymore. Let's go down to the reports on the left, close up the boogie and type in inventory valuation summary. Let's do that one and then change the data just to the end of the year 12 31 2 3 you could do the year to date on the thing and that gives us our units of inventory we have a negative gsb that shouldn't happen because we've but <laughs> so we have we have a, a phantom guitar because our practice problem uh, sold something that we don't physically have which shouldn't generally be the case but in any case 9698 is here if i go back to the first tab 9,698, 698, 9,698. Read it right. Okay, so I think that's it. Let's take a look at our trusty trial balance. Go into the tab to the right and just check our numbers down here as we do every time. Type it in into the reports, the trial balance. Best report for checking the numbers. Balance sheet on top of the income statement in essence with no subtotals. Therefore, it's nice, clean, and easy. We're going to go from 01, 01, 2, 3 to 12, 31, 2, 3. Run it to refresh it. And that's what we have so far. If everything ties out, that's great. If it doesn't, try doing a range change, expanding the range. If there is a change in the numbers, when you change the range, drill down on that number change and then try to change the date possibly which is something that's worth doing in the practice problem but something to be careful of in practice and uh, at the end of uh, the entering the first month of data we will run uh, transaction detail reports which help us to drill down on any differences